In this video, I want to share with you the different types of development strategies that are really working in the real world. Right now, I'm standing in a conversion here that we're doing right now, and I want to share with you the strategies that can work for you and the different types and the niches that you can choose to jump into. So stay focused, stay in, let's jump in right now. And I'm going to share a lot of information with you in this video. Now, when it comes to a development strategy, the development is actually an umbrella. Now, if you're like us, what you find is underneath the umbrella of development, there are a number of niche strategies that will work for you. And what is working really well in the market right now is what we're discussing right now. So you can look at land. You can look at potential land where you can get planning on this land. Now, by increasing the value of the property, you can sell that onto somebody who then can develop that property. Now, you will find that 70% of your margin is made by just getting planning game. So there's a larger margin that you're making for yourself. You're leaving a margin in for someone to build, and that is a great strategy. Another method is that you could actually get that planning and then build the property. Now, the downside of that is that's typically a 12 to 24 month project, if I'm being honest with you. And in, in the real world, that's how it works. Now, a faster way approach is to actually sell that property with the planning like what I say. And somebody else then carries on and builds that property. Now, think of these niches depending on your risk appetite as well. So how can you get into these deals? What is your risk appetite? And what type of time frame do you want for these deals to actually happen? These are three key criteria that you want to be aware of. Now, another development strategy that works really well is where you actually buy something that already has the planning on it. Now, when you're buying something that's already got the planning on it, of course, you've got that confirmation that you can now build that property. Now, just be aware, well, there's one more hoop to jump through, and that is building control. Now, what is building control? What are building regulations? It's really the safety aspect on what you can build and how you can actually build it. Now, you could get planning where you get planning to build, let's say, a block of three flats. However, when it comes to building control, building regulations, they will come in and say, well, actually, you can't build it this way because there's not a window in the bedroom, so it can't be a bedroom, for example. Yeah, just to explain it in simple terms. So building control is how you build the building, in effect, and uh, planning, of course, is what you can build. Also be aware, if you're buying something which has already got planning on it, make sure that you've got the latest set of drawings and the latest set of planning. Because, you know, in this world, yes, we're all friendly here. However, you know, if we're being completely honest, it can be quite sharky out there. So make sure you know what you're buying. Because sometimes what you can find is what you think you bought isn't actually what you bought. Because you might find that the seller is selling you the opportunity to develop, let's say, that three-story building. However, on the portal with the planning application, what you find is that those plans have been superseded by a new set of plans. And they didn't get the three stories, Maybe they only got the two stories, but you will only know that by double checking what you're buying by checking on the planning portal. And that's very easily done, yet a lot of people miss that. So check these things, make sure you've got building control in place and uh, that can really work for you. Now, if you're like me, there's another niche that works for you where you get a faster result. And that is actually taking a building which is already there and converting it. Taking a commercial property and converting it into a residential can work really well for you. In fact, where I'm standing here right now, this is exactly what we're doing. So this is a three-story building, and I'm standing on the middle floor. On the ground floor, there are two one-bedroom flats. On this middle floor, as you can see here, uh, all the framework is being created right now, and there are two one-bedroom flats on this floor. And above this floor, we also have a penthouse, which is a two-bedroom uh, large size flat. So you know these types of conversions can work extremely well for you. Now, where we are in the economy right now, my preferred method right now is finding convert buildings that you can convert. And by the way, it's not always commercial. Well, I'm going to go into the next niche for you as well, but commercials can work extremely well. So think about all the different commercial buildings that are sitting around your area, secondary parades and tertiary parades, just waiting to be converted into residential. Now, you can go for a full planning application with these, and also keep in mind, there is also the permitted development system that is working really well right now. Now, people out there will say to you, oh, permitted development is so much easier, and it takes such a shorter time. Actually, my view is that is not the truth. In my experience, the planning application and the permitted development application actually are fairly, uh, in terms of time frame, about the same. Now, with permitted development, what you do get is confirmation that you can do what you want to do. So the uncertainty is taken out of the equation. In my experience, the permitted development tends to be more certain 
That's the key element. Now, what is permitted development? Just for clarity, that's 100% guaranteed planning permission. It's a tick box system. It's still planning. However, the planning department have to give it to you. So as long as you can tick the boxes of the criteria that is required for a property to match into the permitted development rights, you are given the 100% guaranteed permission, which means, like what I say, that uncertainty is taken out of the equation and you are more certain about your project. That's the thing. Now, permitted development and planning can work on commercial properties, which you can renovate. Now, if you're doing this, make sure that you look at areas where this actually works. So if you're like us, what you do is you look for areas where the property value, the end value, is going to be at least 75% of the current house price index. So as a quick work example, if the house price index right now is £250,000, well then 75% of that is going to be 187500 So you look at areas where the house price index is 187500 So if the value that you're going to create, and you check this right at the beginning, is going to be 187500 or more, well you're in the right area. And if it's less than that, well then we've got to use another strategy, which I'll come to now. So let's discuss another avenue. So what do you do if you are investing in a smaller town? Because remember, it's not just London. There's key cities, of course, across the country. There's London, Birmingham, Oxford, and, and all the rest of the, the towns, larger towns that we have. But how about the smaller towns? So three of our investment areas are small towns in the north of the country. Now in these areas, if you just try to convert everything, it doesn't necessarily work every time, like what I'm saying. So what do you do? So here what we do is we use something we call commercial buy-to-let. Now what is commercial buy-to-let? So these are properties where you can find where you have a commercial element, and above that property there is a residential element. Now you're not creating the residential element, the residential element is already there. So you're buying a semi-commercial property. And because that residential element is already there, and it's already separated out, you can decide to rent out that residential just like a buy-to-let and your commercial becomes your extra bonus, your benefit, if you're like me, you call it the Brucey bonus. It's your 20-30% to 30 discount that you've created by getting that commercial element. Now this also makes your life easier because you can rent that property out in terms of the residential in a much shorter time frame. Lenders will understand that residential element. So there are so many ways that you can start to create income earlier while you're working on the commercial. Now the commercial you might rent out on a longer lease as a commercial or you could decide to convert it but like what I say if it's in a smaller town and it doesn't make any sense you can make sense of it as renting it as a commercial. Now in this way you can make commercial properties, semi-commercial properties work extremely well in smaller towns. Now it's not just smaller towns, this also works in satellite towns, commuter towns around large cities and yes it does also work in large cities as well. We've got to work on the numbers and that's something we can cover on another video as well. Now, there's more strategies within this umbrella of development strategies that you can also implement. You can also look at commercial properties that have a planning gain scenario. So, what do I mean by this? So, you can look at properties where you buy the property as it is right now, you have a commercial tenant in there, and you get planning gain, something that you can bank and come back to later on. Remember, once you've got the planning, that will last for a further three years. And there are ways where you can bank these indefinitely. And it's something that you can come back to later after you bought the commercial property in a few years time where you can come back and do the works that you required. So it's not always the case that you have to convert everything right now. In a way what you're doing is land banking but it's not land, it's commercial properties. Now let me share with you the next strategy and this is a really cool strategy. So look for properties where let's say it's a single story building and on either side there's a president set where there is a two, three, four, five story building on either side. Now what you've got there is a strong presence and you've got airspace above to actually be able to get planning to convert and develop uh, above that conversion that you're going to create. Now with the presidents, what does that mean? You've got the airspace, so that airspace you can get planning and develop that site and you've got much more chance of getting that because of the presidents. So I really hope this video has given you food for thought. I've shared my heart in terms of what we're doing here practically and the kind of deals that we do and there is so much that you can do. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I would love you to subscribe to this channel. It will help us as well and it will help our community. And uh, if you click on that bell icon, you'll get the latest notifications. I'll see you on the next video. It's Cam Devady helping you take your property investing and developing to the next level. See you soon.